Welcome back to my series on making a military rifle stock from scratch. The buttstock is fully shaped from the butt plate area to the front of the trigger guard. In this video, I'm going to be shaping from there forwards. The first step is to cut this end to length. I have a trick to align the original stock in order to get the measurement. The crag action, like a lot of bolt actions, is roughly cylindrical. With the rear sight removed from the barrel, I can place the original stock upside down on top of the stock blank. Then I'll mark the end. I'll use a square to extend that mark across the stock plank. and then down the side. For a sanity check, I'll drop the action into the original stock and mark the end directly on the barrel. With it then transferred over, I'll double check that the two marks align, which they do. To be extra sure, I have a bayonet here, and I'll add the front band. With the front of the band even with the mark, the muzzle ring is properly overlapping the barrel. With everything checking out, I'll move to the table saw and set the stock plank down on the crosscut sled. I'll align the mark to the slot, raise the blade, and begin the cut. With the stock plank back on the workbench, I'll begin to remove the majority of the waist on the front end. I'll start by measuring the height, copying from points along the original stock, and marking the stock plank. I'm using calipers to measure. The front end of the stock is a much more uniform shape than the butt stock, making it easier to get accurate markings. In order to measure the points where the stock steps down, the spots at which the front and middle bands are fit, with the stock in the vise, I'll again add the action and the original stock upside down. Then I can directly mark those points. and use the square to transfer those markings to the side.
It's a bit hard to see, but I'll be following the pencil line I just drew with the saw. I'll transfer the stock blank over to the bandsaw and start cutting. With the bottom of the forend cut to size, I want to smooth out the rough surface left over by the bandsaw. For that, I'll use a hand plane. I want a fairly smooth surface on the bottom in order to redraw the center line. I'll be referencing it later on as a guide during the shaping process. With the center line drawn on the bottom, I'll flip the stock over in order to mark the width. I'll add the action. and the original stock upside down. I'll clamp them together so they don't move. I'm going to trace the width, and I'll be sure to hold the pencil vertical so the widest point is marked. The original stock curls inwards towards the top or the bottom from this perspective. If I were to mark with the point against there, I'd end up with the forend too narrow. If I wasn't able to fit the stocks together like this, I'd measure the width with calipers like I did the height. I'll remove the original stock and the action in order to complete the markings. At the action inletting, I'll approximate the lines using the marks at the front and the width at the rear. Then I'll move back to the bandsaw. I want to make sure that with my lines on the top of the stock plank that I can complete the cut. At the end of the cut, it pulls off of the table only by a little bit, so it'll be fine. I'll start the cut.
With the stock roughly cut to width, I'm going to plane away the rough surface again, but this time I'm going to go a bit further and get this area of the stock to just over the final dimension. This area of the original stock is flat, which is another benefit of using the hand plane to get it smooth, as it leaves a perfectly flat surface. I'll compare the two stocks with calipers. The front needs to come down further. However, the rear is just a bit oversized, which is what I want. I'll measure via the barrel channel which side needs to go down further. They're about even. If anything, this side is slightly wider. I'll start here. The front is just a bit wider than the original stock. Again, that's what I was targeting. So this whole area is close, but slightly oversized. The reason behind getting the area in between the magazine and the middle band to near final dimension is that I'm going to be cutting the finger grooves. To cut the grooves, I'll be using the router and a rounded bit called a cove, running it along like so. I have a selection of cove bits here. I'll find one that matches the radius of the grooves in the original stock. Looks like the one inch bit is the best fit. One thing I noticed is that the groove is wider at the rear than it is at the front. Though it does feel as though it's a consistent radius, the groove is deeper at the back. This is telling me that I'll have to cut at a slight angle relative to the flat sides. To find the angle, I have a scrap 1 inch round rod that fits snugly in the groove. I'll add a ruler on top, then I can measure the distance from the ruler to the stock at the rear. and then move forward 8 inches and measure at the front. The difference is right around 50 thousandths. So this is telling me that over the course of 8 inches, the front end of the stock needs to go about 50 thousandths lower than the rear. I could do trig to find the exact angle, but it doesn't matter because when I go to make my setup, I'll measure the same way. Now I'll measure how long the grooves are. The router bit will leave a rounded end, but these aren't exactly round, 
They're oval shaped. I'll have to shape them by hand, but to measure how far to cut with the router, I'll look for the point at which the rod pulls away. Right about there. That's the end point, but for the center of the bit. I'll measure how far that is from the magazine area. Then I'll slide it over and measure the other side. Another measurement I need is the distance the groove is from the top edge. I'll add back on the bar and align it so the slot on the end is vertical. Then I'll hold a board against the top and measure down from it to the slot. The groove looks parallel to the top edge, but I'll double check by measuring the other side as well. Last, I'll measure how deep to go. Holding a rule across the groove, I'll measure down at the widest point. I'll subtract the width of the rule, and then I'll add a few thousands to account for the oversized width of the stock plank. That will give me how deep to set the depth step on the router. I set up the stock and the vise off camera, since it was tricky to get everything aligned. But here I can double check that the angle is correct. I'll use the ruler to mark the beginning and end points. and then I can measure down. I'm looking for the front to be 50 thousandths lower. That's pretty much spot on. I had been tapping on the rear to get the angle correct, but with it looking good, I'll add a clamp to hold it all together. I almost forgot to mark the length of the finger grooves on the stock plank. I'll use the end of the ruler as a square to extend the lines since I'll need to see them on either side of the bit when I'm cutting. Then I'll mark the center line on either end and connect them. With everything measured and marked, I'll get out the router and add the fence. I'll use the smaller bit I have in there now to align it with the center line. Then I can swap in the correct bit. I'll touch off at the rear of the groove and use a block to set the depth stop. This is a large cutter relative to the size of my router, so I'll make the cut in many small passes. Now I can repeat the whole process on the other side. Most of the measurements can be copied, but I will need to remeasure the endpoints of the groove. Then I'll redo the setup in the vise. Double check that everything looks good. and make the cut.
There's the grooves fresh off of the router. There's some burning, but they are even on both sides, which I was sure to get accurate. It's hard to tell since it is a slight difference, but the groove is wider at the rear than it is at the front, just like on the original stock. The rounded edges of the grooves that I just cut don't match up well. For that, I'll have to shape them by hand. To ensure they match on either side, I'll make a template of the front and the back of the grooves. I'll use them to mark the original stock. Then I can move to the vise and shape them by hand with the gouge. Now to smooth out the ends I carved by hand, as well as get rid of the burn marks left over by the router. This rod is slightly smaller than 1 inch, that's to account for the thickness of the sandpaper that I'm wrapping around it. I'll run it in the grooves, going up the ends that I carved by hand. Running up and over the edge of the grooves with the sanding block is exactly how you're not supposed to sand stocks, since the sharp edge of the finger grooves will be rounded over. But with the whole side of the stock being slightly oversized, it will restore the sharp edge when I bring it down to the final dimension. That will have to wait however, since the shaping of the fore end starts at the front with the front band. I'll fit it to this step down that I had roughly cut on the bandsaw. Instead of adding the action, this aluminum scrap rod is the exact diameter of the end of the barrel. I can use it to align the front band and trace on the inside of it. That will give me a guide for the chisel as I remove the corners. It's hard to work from this angle. I feel as though I don't have good control over the chisel. I'll move it so the stock is vertical. That's much better. I can work downwards with the chisel, providing more control in both heavy cuts and light shaves.
The front band is fitting now, but the front needs to be flush with the end of the stock. I'll need to bring this area at the rear down. It looks like I brought it down enough, and with a lot of test fits along the way, the wood has eased up and I'm able to slide it on. I'll make sure it's seated all the way. That's looking good. The wood is even with the band at the rear, and the front is flush to the end of the stock. One last thing is to drill the hole for the retaining screw. I'll mark both sides. And I'll start with an undersized drill bit, going halfway from each side. Then I'll step up to the size of the screw and go all the way through. Then I'll test fit the screw. At the rear of the front band, there is a small step, only about the thickness of the band, so I'll trace around it. I want to shape this whole area from the mark I just made back to the middle band. But the stock is relatively thin at this point and will flex quite a bit. For more support, I'll add the action and the front band only about halfway on. The barrel will provide the support that I need as I use the spoke shape to remove the corners. and there's just enough room at the front band for the spoke shape to fit. That just removed some of the waste. Now I want to bring the very front down 
to just over the outline of the front band that I drew earlier. I'll move back to the location for the middle band and measure the height of the original stock and transfer that to the stock plank. I'll work with the chisel to get the step down to match the measurement that I took earlier. Rounding the corners as I go will mean less material needs to be removed from the very bottom. This area of the original stock is entirely straight all the way around. I'll work to get the bottom of the stock plank straight. Since both ends are close to their final dimension, I only need to remove material from in between. I'll be checking for straightness as I go. Once the very bottom, or top from this perspective, is mostly straight, I can move to the corners, rounding them off, but maintaining straightness. I haven't touched the left or right sides of this area much, but I do want to check the fit of the middle band as I go. It should be fairly loose just behind the front band. I'll be removing material from the sides as I try and work it backwards. I'll also be looking at how the curve on the stock plank matches up to the curve on the inside of the band. While this area is straight as shown earlier, it's a gradual taper from where the middle band fits down to the front band. As I slide the band back and forth, I'm looking for an even amount of gap all around it at the front, gradually diminishing as I get it to fit where it should. As I get closer to where the middle band is to fit, I'll use the chisel to remove wood right up to the rough step down.
that's fitting well. But before I even out the step down like I did at the front, I'll finish up the area that I had been working. I'll go back over the area in between the bands with the straight edge, removing any high spots. Then I'll smooth it out just like I did with the buttstock in the previous video. I'll start by changing to a light cut on the spoke shave to remove any high spots. And then I'll go over it with coarse sandpaper on a block. And then without the block, I'll pull the sandpaper tight to go over the curve. With the front section looking good, I'll move back to the middle band. I have these location marks left over from when I rough cut the stock. I'll use a square to extend them down the sides. Then I'll connect them on the underside. I'll move the band up and out of the way. Then I can use the chisel to even out this area. I'll slide the band back down. It's touching on the left, but there's a small gap on the right. That's looking good now. The band is butted up to the wood all around. Just like at the front, the step down is only about the thickness of the band. I'll trace around it. Actually, I should tighten the band down first. Then trace it. With the band out of the way, I'll roughly fill in the area where the pencil couldn't reach.
This middle section will follow the same process that I used to shape the front end. I'll start by removing the corners. Now I'll work just the very end down, close to the pencil line. I'll check the original stock for straightness from the trigger guard to the metal band. From here to here, it's straight. And from here back, it's straight. At around the 8 to 9 inch mark on the rule, there's a very small hump in the stock. Now I'll move to the stock blank and match those. Hit straight. The ruler pulls away slightly, a few inches in front of the trigger guard, which is exactly what I was after. Much like how I shaped the front, I want to continue shaving, blending the bottom into the sides in a nice gentle curve. But in order to do so, I can't have it in the vise like this. I need full access all around. I'll flip it over in order to remove the action. Without any square surfaces left, I'll have to clamp the buttstock in the vise to hold it. When working this area, I know from earlier that the stock will flex quite a bit, so I set up a board in order to support the front, then I can remove the corners. I'm only shaving the sides down lightly with the spoke shave, but you can see how it restores the sharp edge to the finger grooves. I'll check for symmetry with the contour gauge. 
This curve is telling me that the far side needs to come down in order to match the near side. And the same is true at the front, though it's not as drastic of a difference as at the rear. That's looking much better. I'll be sure to compare against the original stock as well. With it all looking good, I'll repeat the same rough finishing process that I used on the front end starting with the sanding block. The block is especially important around the finger grooves to not round off the sharp edges. And I had already sanded in the grooves themselves. I'll be sure to go down into the wrist with the sanding block, blending with the buttstock shaping that I did previously. Again, I'll pull the sandpaper tight over the curve. I'll only do it on the bottom to avoid the finger grooves. With the whole front end smooth, there's only one more thing to do. The original stock has a cutout at the front of the magazine. Its dimensions aren't critical, so I'll roughly mark it out. And get to work chiseling it out. The cutout is for this. To show how it fits, I'll add the action. It's the hinge for the magazine door. With it upside down, you can see that there's enough clearance for it to open. The flat part is a cover for inspection and oiling of the magazine mechanism. And while I have the action in, I'll show how the middle band fits. The wood behind the step down is even with it. But that's it for the front end. I'm not going to call the shaping process easy, but it's more straightforward than shaping the buttstock was due to the mostly straight lines and the ability to break it down into sections like I did with the part forward of the middle band and then the part behind. Again, there will be a finishing video for the whole stock, but before I get there, there's one more part to be made, the handguard. Stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching.